Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Leadership Boy Podcast. I'm Enrique, along with Vince, my co-host. We have a very, very exciting show today, very exciting uh, guest, and I'm going to let Vince uh, introduce him, but this is going to be a good one. All right. Well, happy Wednesday, everybody. The day before Thanksgiving, uh, we are here giving thanks to our wonderful guest from Dayton, Ohio, Mr. Rick Nick. Ripplinger. He's the president of Battle Site Technologies in Dayton, Ohio. So we're just pleased and honored to have him. So Nick, tell us about you. Yeah, so my story had way too much fun in high school. College wasn't probably the best option for us. So went off, did the army thing for about seven years, had a bad day in Iraq, got medically retired, moved back home to Dayton. Um, you know, worked in the defense industry for a few years and then started Battlesite in 2017. And Battlesite really is a rapid commercialization of uh, infrared technologies for the warfighter. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And, you know, we are all warfighters in one way or another, right? Uh, yeah. and, and have that uh, military history uh, behind us. Uh, what's exciting about what you guys are doing is they're directly reflective of your history along with what's going on today. So uh, tell us a little bit more about specifically uh, Battle Site Technologies. Yeah, so we started off in 2017 through a patent license agreement with the Air Force. So people way smarter than us came up with a pretty cool technology and it was sitting on the shelf. We bought the rights to that technology, brought it in-house, refined it, figured out a way to scale it up. And basically we started manufacturing these infrared crayons. So they work just like an IR chem light, but now you can actually write with them, stay on a solid surface, it doesn't run. So it's a low light, no light communication for the tactical warfighter. And then since then we've come up with a CDI marker, infrared CDI marker for down pilots and air crew. We came out with a technology called cold fire that works like the dials on the watch for friend foe identification. So it sucks in light energy during the day and then emits in the infrared spectrum at night. And just kind of, you know, we really pride ourselves on, you know, having that deep relationship with our customers and just trying to solve their cool problems. Wow, you know, that's amazing how you took something that was had dust on a shelf and you build upon that so the creativity and ingenuity of of yourself and your staff is amazing um how many you have on your staff and who who is your client and how you guys are holding up and doing these times yeah so we're a team of six we've actually grown in 2020 which is you know pretty unheard of during these covid times a lot of companies are shrinking and laying off um but during the, the initial shutdown, like we wanted our people to show back up when we were back up and running and manufacturing. So, you know, how do you find that balance of keeping your team employed and able to pay their bills? So we put everybody on a paid furlough besides myself and the COO, and we moved into producing hand sanitizer for kind of our core customer base, the DOD, first responders, emergency management professionals. So we moved about 50,000 pounds of hand sanitizer that we bottled down off of you know our existing equipment to you know stay engaged with our customers and then that you know funnel or funded the ability to keep our team employed now that's a, that's amazing and you know when you talk about uh thinking on your on your two feet uh, and even thinking when you fall down that was a great initiative on you guys part uh to ensure the longevity first of all of your company and the livelihood of the people that are working with you and for you now when in terms of uh what you're doing now what does the horizon look like for you guys yeah so the horizon is you know as entrepreneurs and you know kind of go-getters we're always super optimistic but uh we laid the groundwork we, i mean we put in the effort in 2020 to have a great 2021 um you know, sales were definitely down because all the trade shows were canceled, all the traveling, all the demonstrations were canceled. But, you know, we invested heavily over 2020 to get these other products on market uh, into production so we can take those to market, you know, whenever this frees up and being, you know, pretty niche, it's just kind of expanded, you know, our product offerings. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm very curious if you're all going to expand to to uh, other horizons, other landscapes internationally, and and so on. Are you? Yeah. All- so we. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But uh, on the international side, we did do a international distribution deal with Steiner E Optics. So they're a subsidiary of Breda Firearms. So we we are pushing into the international, right? We were, we don't fight wars, you know, one country against one country nowadays. It's, you know, the joint mission set. So we want to ensure that we're enabling our foreign partners who are going to be on the ground with us as well. Right. And, and so, so obviously, you know, you're, you're eight years in the army and unfortunately you had a medical be discharged, but that to me served value in creating a more capable leader that you are well-rounded and holistic. So let's talk a little bit about you as a leader. Um, what do you currently do uh, to improve your capabilities as a leader in the professional setting? You know, honestly, I just real fast on that point, you know, the military really provided that groundwork for leadership in my eyes, far more than, you know, an undergrad or master's or any type of, you know, advanced degree could ever do. And that was really the foundation. When you put people first and you always are working to make their lives better, the same way we're working to make our customers' lives better, that was all 100% driven from the way, you know, as a former NCO, it's just kind of what we do, right? We take care of our people first, we execute on the mission. And that translates very well to business where I don't think you necessarily get that from a civilian leader as that foundation bedrock. But a lot of the stuff I do to kind of continue improving on my leadership skills uh, are masterminds, to be honest with you. I read a lot, giant nerd, full disclosure. But, you know, the same way in the military, right? We've got this, you know, core of E5s or staff sergeants or, you know, whatever rank you are, you've got your little circle and you talk and you bounce ideas off of each other and you find out what works and you find out what fails and you hopefully don't make the mistakes of, you know, your brothers and sisters that are in the same position. And then you try to give value back from what you learned. And so on the entrepreneur side and on the leadership side, I definitely have that, you know, circle around me that all, we all try to make each other better and more successful. Those are definitely one of the key points to being an effective leader. And uh, Vince and I, have definitely dived into a lot of the conversations. And believe me, that's not the first thing that most people say, but it is the most valuable thing that you can say as a leader when your people are first. And so thank you for that advice. Um, what other advice can you share with the, the listening audience or people that are emerging as leaders uh, that you can help them with? Yeah, I think the number one thing is you have to know your people, right? You have to get that personal relationship with them. So, you know, Enrique, yelling at you might motivate you and that might completely turn Vince off. And one, I don't like to yell to begin with, so I don't ever recommend that, but you have to kind of figure out what the, what triggers and what motivates people and then, you know, address them respectfully and as professionals and, you know, make that, I guess you got to, communicate in an effective way to that person versus there's no blanket answer to it. No, absolutely. You know, be empathetic and, uh, you know, meet them where they're at, right. Versus where you want them to be. So that's very truthful and, and and some great advice. Now you having a team and growing up to develop this great company since 2017, what challenges have you faced um, with either yourself or your team to grow? You know, honestly, we're doing, you know, innovative stuff. And we have no clue what the hell we're doing 90% of the time. And so we really pride ourselves on that fail fast, right? Like if you have an idea, let's invest in it. Let's go figure out if it works or if it doesn't work. So we can kind of move on. I think it was like Edison who said he found like 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. And that's, you know, kind of corny and, you know, kind of cliche. And when you're talking about it, but it, when you kind of break down the factors of that, it's really how we run battle site is, you know, there's no dumb idea. There's ideas that might fail, but let's get to that failure fast so we can move on to the next idea or put the pencils down and move forward into production. Yeah. I love that because, you know, there's definitely challenges all around us, especially as we go about, you know, in the day and the time that we live in today, um, you know, upon, upon challenges, 
there's also change, right? Because we're facing many a change. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and right now, yeah, so right now, it's a perfect time to start looking at how you address changes. And so let me ask you, how, how do you address change and uh, with your team and how do you build a strategy around change? Yeah, so change? we definitely, like, I think you hit the nail on the head, man. 2020 has been wild. Nobody knows what's going on, but we always know that next week there's probably going to be a change that we have to address. And in my opinion, that full transparency is the only way to go about doing this. It's not like, hey, we're going to staff up to 20 people or we're going to fire people. We just don't know what the future is going to hold. And so if you're openly communicating and keeping your staff informed, I think it makes that change a little easier to digest when it happens because they knew, that, hey, this was a possibility and you know kind of just you know opening up the books to the team so they know exactly why we made what decisions no, that's awesome you know being totally transparent is what i'm also hearing because change is inevitable but growth is optional so and to your earlier point you know you guys just deal with uncertainty it seems like every day yeah <laughs> you embrace it right? <laughs> you have to i mean you can go mad you know, trying to plan and figure out all this stuff and have a hard plan in place because it's going to change. You know, it's going to change in, you know, 2017, but in 2020 with stuff that's way out of our control that we have nothing that we can do about it, it's going to happen even more. That's amazing. You know, we're just honored to hear, you know, the growth of, of, of an idea of, that came off the shelf <laughs> and look where you at today, three years later. So, uh, any last thoughts about what you'd like to share about Battlesite Technologies and how do people get a hold of you and or the company? Yeah, so super easy. My email is nick at Battlesite Tech. Feel free to email. Happy to help. Um, huge passion of ours is helping transition veterans. So if there's anything we can do, you got a great idea and don't know what to do with it, reach out to us. Um, we're on social media. I won't lie. I don't have a clue how any of that works, but I'm sure if you just Google Battlesite, you'll find us there as well. Outstanding. Folks, you, you, you're hearing uh, innovation, not only in practice, but in execution. And I'm so proud uh, to have a fellow service member uh, leading the charge in that regard, because we do have a lot to offer. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned transitioning uh, service members. A lot of people find themselves at a loss. And uh, I'm glad that you guys found your way and are making a headway in the, in the technology sector. Folks, if you want to reach out to them, we'll make sure that we provide that information with the video or the text uh, version of the show. Uh, but uh, if you want to get a hold of us at the Leadership Void, uh, our Gmail is theleadershipvoid at gmail.com. Uh, as you can see, if you want, to, uh, you want us to wear your shirt, if you want us to sip out of your mug, uh, send it uh, our way and we'll be glad to do that. Uh, Nick, it's been a pleasure to uh, speak with you and find out exactly what you guys are doing. Uh, uh, Vince and I are looking forward to visiting Ohio. Yeah, now. anytime. You guys are always welcome. Appreciate it, guys. And absolutely. And I like to say, you know, to everybody who's listening, you know, Nick and his company is shining the light, even at night, <laughs> for, for any path like that you need in the sea, in the air. And you can write on anything. So it's incredible to hear the tech, what you all have done and are doing uh, to help uh, first responders, our military, and those those that are out there in, in adversarial situations. So thank you for being on our show, Nick. We appreciate it. Honestly, to everybody out there, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your week. And we'll, we'll follow up next week. We're going to Fayetteville, Georgia, to speak with Brent Taylor. He is the military program coordinator at Camp Southern Ground. So we'll go to Georgia and speak to him about what fabulous things he's doing. But for today, Nick and, and, and the fabulous six that you have, uh, congratulations and keep growing. And, and we'll see you at the next Veterans Magazine in the, in the near future. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.